Central banks around the world foresee a crisis and so they are attempting to take action. But what happens when the governments drive off the cliff? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I want to begin first by discussing what is happening in the Ukraine. Ukraine Central Bank raised its benchmark interest rate to the world's highest. The fifth emergency move since the beginning of last week to arrest a plunge in their currency as the nation moves closer to obtaining a bailout. This information is out of Bloomberg. I wanted to note the fact that they're moving this interest rate up to the highest in the world. This right here goes to show you how very serious, how bad the situation is in the Ukraine. There's obviously the tensions with Russia. And right here, if they're going to take money from the IMF, they are going to be doomed for the foreseeable future. Just look at what happened in Greece. The National Bank of Ukraine raised its refinancing rate to 30% from 19.5% effective Wednesday to stabilize the situation on the money and lending markets. Okay, so this right here reminds me of what happened in 1980 in the U.S. where in order to stop the heavy rates of inflation, they simply increased their interest rate significantly. And right here we have about a 10% increase in a very short period of time this will obviously put a damper on the economy but right now they have much bigger fish to fry as they say so this is the ukraine obviously we have major tensions happening right there you can uh, read this for yourself this article to see what's going on but i want to show you the opposite end of the spectrum the Reserve Bank of India, remember I always show you the facts directly from the sources, this is right from their website, and they said the Reserve Bank reduced the policy repo rate by 25 basis points and indicated that the key to further uh, easing our data that confirmed continuing disinflationary pressures. A couple points I want to make here. Obviously, while you have uh, countries that are few and far between, but like the Ukraine, which are increasing the interest rates, you have India. I just covered the fact that Australia recently reduced them. Canada re recently reduced them and other countries around the world are reducing their interest rates. Um, this is obviously um, different than what's happening in a few countries, one being the Ukraine. They also like to use the word disinflation, and they have other words for it as well, because they don't want to use the word deflation. It's all about the wording that they use. That is simply just a form of propaganda. They do exactly what happened in 1984 from George Orwell, where they... Uh, have this ability to remove words from the language in order to change people's opinion on it. It's very, very deep intelligence when you look into this. I want to move on quickly. Just wanted to, to note another thing here, the effective federal funds rate, and they're sort of making uh, fun of it. But right here, you have Bear Stearns collapsing, and they begin instantly dropping dramatically this Fed funds rate, the interest rate is essentially, of the Federal Reserve. And then as soon as they begin to play with these rates, and, and not much by the way, but we have the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers, and right away they bring the interest rates down to 0%. And they've been there ever since. So we have from 2009 to present day, interest rates at 0%. This is absolutely unsustainable. But of course, if you ask the global mass media you ask the finance uh, individuals out there they'll simply say that the stock market is doing well why are you so negative negative? and that's the silliness that i have to get into every single day this right here is from my book where i'm talking about the governments around the world being incapable of prevent preventing crashes and fixing economic or political issues their policies always work in favor of the bankers and the average person gets the short end of the stick time and time again of course because when you bring interest rates down to zero you do not encourage savings savings are how you build a strong economy because the people will save up their money for a long period of time 
and they'll buy that home. They'll buy that big ticket item. Yes, it might take a few years, but surely people will save and they will buy. That's the way it works. But when you work within shorter cycles, like four years uh, for a president or other cycles, you're simply not able to deal with this at all. And that's why you have this kind of behavior within the governments and those in the finance industry. Look at this right here out of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. The GDP now model forecast for the real GDP growth in the first quarter of 2015 was only 1.2 percent. So just recently had they had supposedly 5 percent then we move into 1.2 percent and it wasn't too long ago that they had a negative percentage what in the world is happening with this gdp numbers these fraudulent numbers that they continue to purport that are always growing but we know that's not the truth it is a lie these numbers are fake and phony and 1.2 percent at least at the very least is more accurate than that garbage number of five percent that they put out not too long ago. This is a chart here, actually two charts, that I've been wanting to look at, wanting to show you guys, and I finally have it right here. Rising crude oil production on the top, and then at the bottom you have the oil prices. And isn't it very interesting that you have the production increasing in a straight line, <clears throat> excuse me, increasing in a straight line from approximately uh, 2011 up until mid 2014 approximately you have these uh, production values increasing at the same time that the oil prices are staying steady why in the world there's two things i want to cover here why in the world would they not foresee a price decrease should there be these uh, the production increasing and therefore the stockpiles increasing this is something that i've been mentioning consistently ever since this crash in oil prices occurred did they not realize that they were going to end up with the stockpiles did the stockpiles just all of a sudden appear of course not so that's one thing and why at why 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 all of a sudden did these uh, the oil prices fall if they knew the stockpiles were there why would all of a sudden on this particular day they started dropping so dramatically something is fishy here and i don't believe it for a second something else is going on and we simply can't get to the bottom of it i've released some intelligence here on this but there's something going on that's definitely deep with in this uh these statistics that we're seeing just something i want to note i want to move on quick japan services pmi currently in a contractionary phase when they say they're going to print 108 billion if my memory serves me correctly per month what happens you get a contraction printing money does not expand anything except the balance sheet of that central bank right here this is Alibaba, opened at 92.70 not that long ago, and look at it today, actually lower than where it began. And one of the reasons why this is happening, although it has been moving down from its initial rise, they're actually doing some... I wouldn't say criminal, but I, I'm sure this is definitely against the law in some way, but they are really allowed to go ahead and I believe the word is either buffering or release a method and essentially I'll, I'll, I'll explain what it is and that is they have fake customers in fact there are these schemes that they are able to conjure up where a lot of the sales a lot of the supposed revenue that's coming through Alibaba is in fact fake and they are able to do this in fact they are even advertising this type of behavior some retailers are advertising this type of behavior on alibaba so you can actually buy those services from the same company and uh, this is quite interesting and this is a crackdown that has been occurring bringing the stock 
down to new lows. You can look at into that for yourself for the proper terminology and all of that. I'm going to move on right here to this article out of Forbes. Obama eyes more tax hikes by executive action. Can you believe this? That they are going into these great lengths. Obama will do anything by executive action and in fact by memorandum because executive action, you know, that's too messy. I could just write a note on a piece of paper and call that law. Who needs that thing called a Congress is that that's what it's called a, a Congress, you know, the the voice of the people uh, right here. Let's go down to the bottom. The tax gauntlet was tossed down by his White House press secretary who said the president was, quote, very interested in raising taxes through executive action. And this is something that we're seeing consistently you cannot do anything by executive action you can't just make laws by executive decree this is not how it works you don't just take a napkin write what you want written into law and then that's considered law you can't just do this this doesn't work like this this is illegal behavior and some people simply have to stand up for this the way they talk about it is that look he just wants to take action. He just wants to get his job done. But of course, you're not allowed to do that. This is actually illegal. This is what's not being discussed in the mainstream media and for obvious reasons. But of course, I'll continue to bring it out here. And look at all of the result of this type of behavior that's coming from the governments, that's coming from the central banks. Look at this. Target's chief executive said Tuesday the retailer will cut several thousand jobs within the next two years as part of a $2 billion cost savings plan. We saw this type of behavior during the recession in so many companies around the world and governments, in fact, laying off people dramatically. And what does that do? It doesn't do anything to save any money for these companies because who's going to come and buy these products if there's people being laid off? They're not thinking ahead. They don't understand that all they understand is corporate profits. And I assure you that is their only real driving force for these companies. It's always how do we increase our corporate profits? They do not care about rising, having a rising economy so that people will walk into their store and actually buy things. It's simply if we fire people, we don't have to worry about increasing the amount of things that people buy. And this is just it's just amazing to see the failure. We can see these governments driving off the cliff right now as we speak. And this is sad because I can tell where it's headed. And I assure you, it's going to be headed right to that, right to the bottom of this cliff. There is no doubt about that. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. I also wanted to say that your comments on the previous video that I did are um, really kind. I really appreciate that very, very much. I, I read through all of them uh, just recently here and just wanted to note that, you know, I really do appreciate all that. I will continue, continue to bring out the truth and I will stop at nothing. This is the Money GPS Insiders. It's where I give out all my best intel for free, and that is available at themoneygps.com. You just scroll down to the bottom, fill in your email address, and you get occasional emails from me with good, short, concise info.